Bonjour everyone, welcome to another Diecast Showcase. Uh, welcome back to the channel if it's a, a return visit, welcome if it's your first uh, visit over. So um, yep, today we're going to be doing another uh, little quick showcase uh, com in combination with um, recent finds. Um, so um, I did manage uh, over the past uh, week or two to find uh, half a dozen... Uh, uh, or less than that, actually. A couple, a uh, couple uh, premium casts, basically, that I'm, uh, um, that I'm happy I found. Um, I'll start off with um, a lone green light. That uh, there was a couple good drops of green light in my area in the last uh, couple weeks. Um, well, I, 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 except for the last couple weeks, should I say? Um, I did though manage to find something I. Um, am definitely happy I found and it's definitely in line with the uh, type of vehicle that I do collect so first vehicle we're gonna check out would be this uh, green light 1979 uh, 1978 Ford F-250 with uh, lots of patina uh, and this is out of the uh, Yellowstone uh, uh, green light Hollywood series um, so this is a pretty fresh release series 38 uh true 164 it's a uh, uh, metal on metal as you can see here um and yeah i'm not really familiar with the show itself i don't really watch it basically but uh i mean this truck i, I saw it and i am out of the series it's the one i had to have um you know you got some rusty fender rusty hood rust on the top with the peeling paint even the bed is like all rusted out and dirty some Really nice rust detail on the bumper. As you can see, you got a really good amount of detail on this thing. Wheels are pretty authentic. Um, yeah, it's a really nice truck. I do find it would have been nice if uh, there was a little bit extra patina on that front bumper. But all in all, uh, very nice. Uh, this will look great uh, in conjunction with the um, release from uh, Independence Day that uh, that uh, beat up Chevy pickup. Uh, uh, 70 Chevy pickup basically that uh, was in the movie um, so yeah I'm really happy about the about this little addition plus I don't have a whole lot of cast with this body style of Ford pickup if any at all actually so uh, definitely a cool ad there um, next up I was um, uh, lucky enough to stumble upon a fairly fresh drop of uh, the new um, Drag, st drag strip demon uh, rehash uh, so the new series uh, wasn't interested in all the castings and I did notice upon arriving that there were two full sets missing only one Willie's uh, 33 Willie's uh, rust bucket um, so I'm assuming that was a chase and I'm assuming I was second in line probably um but uh, nevertheless, won't peruse on that too long. I did manage to pick up the regular version, which is really cool. Another little pat patinated truck for you there. Um, new casting for Hot Wheels. Definitely uh, nicely done, at least in my opinion. Um, surprisingly enough, the front light tampos maybe a little bit too clean compared to the rest. That's just my opinion there, mind you. But uh, uh, besides that, I mean... The rust application, very, very good, pretty realistic. I like the full uh, wood on the side of the box there. You got ample amount of rust on the top as well. Got the cool uh, little 392 Hemi uh, um, script on the hood. We got a little Chrysler engine in there, I guess, or Mopar. Maybe not. You guys can definitely correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but uh, yeah, love the fact that uh, you got that uh, that air breather popping out of there. The blower, very cool. Nice wheel setup as well with those uh, those steel wheels, kind of like the milk truck wheels. Definitely, uh, definitely staggered the way I like. Not so much in diameter, but really in width. You can definitely see the setup here, how it looks from underneath. Open headers, really, really nice cast. I definitely, definitely like this a lot. And uh, yeah, you got this metal chute in the back there. Pretty cool. 
pretty pretty cool so that was definitely the one i was pretty much most forward looking uh looking forward to pretty much the only one i thought i'd actually pick up but uh, then i saw this one which seems to be the set favorite for most and i was like darn that paint job so retro so nice really nice metallic purple you know the the it looks very period as a deco uh again same set of wheels but in chrome instead of being in that uh in that um beige uh, color from uh the willies um great uh detail work and i i, I kind of wanted to pick this one up as well because this model the uh, plymouth duster uh was actually my dad's first car so um, that was pretty cool as well that they decided to include this in the lineup and it's a straight up drag car you know it, it's it's kind of thing i'd see uh i'd see in a 1320 video when uh, you know they do uh no prep uh no prep uh you know mexico run you know things like that so very cool very very cool i mean there's nothing i really can fault about this casting everything's perfect basically everything is good down to the sponsorships that are the sponsorships that are pretty much all yeah all legit real licensed sponsors well plus obviously a little hot wheel flame there but you know so yeah had to had to get this one just looks great in person probably looks amazing out of the card but uh we'll be cracking these uh at least not yet that's for sure um then basically uh i have two stores that are kind of like book slash hobby stores that do have a small die cast section that are actually located very close to where i live and um it's two different stores under two different banners uh not necessarily across the street from each other but literally less than uh you know i don't know uh maybe a quarter mile in between each um and they're actually owned by the same owner um so they get pretty much the same stuff at the same time and one of these uh, two stores i uh stumbled into it's really where i pick up anything from there because one is pretty much a 20 percent sur cost compared to the big box stores and two their selection is extremely limited but a lot of time not a lot of people go to these stores so when something actually does drop i do often get lucky in picking up uh, a cool piece um example uh, in another video um showcase uh, sh uh, fine showcase video um i had shown out the uh uh majorette uh, chase mercedes a class uh the uh rose gold uh chase piece out of the premium car series uh that's actually a piece that i found there so uh, it's an example and uh, they had a massive drop like maybe two cases worth of these uh, exotic envies basically the second series this is the start of the show for me basically the uh the ascenza well not more really star of the show more like i guess my favorite color wise i mean if we're talking about just about the car this is definitely my favorite the eb110 and i've shown off these cars uh, the ones that are interesting to me those two specifically i had picked up in the past this is the one i picked up in the past basically um and yeah uh, it's funny because uh, again out of the first set, the two cars that I picked up were the green uh, Huracan and the Veyron. Uh, no, is it the no the Chiron? Sorry. Uh, not of this set. Well, green Lamborghini, the Ascenza, and the blue EB110. So these are some continuity in the, the thought process here. The reason why we're showing this is because I went to the first store on one day, managed to find the Chase, which is really cool this is the second chase piece uh out of a premium line that i find uh, i did find the volvo which i traded for a bunch of cool castings uh, a couple months back when the um, auto strass series came out um and uh, now well basically we're looking at the sun's uh, chase that uh managed to pick up on that day and um you know since uh, i didn't have a whole lot of time at that point uh next day i went to the other store that's affiliated with the same owner got the same drop and guess what found another one so two ascenza chase pieces and i know these are in uh you know ebay prices are completely ridiculous on these we're talking about 135 bucks before shipping on average you know or maybe on the high end 
are all over 100 bucks basically before shipping so got two of these i've already got one lined up for a straight up sale and the other one that i'm uh, working on a very interesting trade that i'll be glad to share with you if it actually happens i personally prefer the look of the of the green regular version versus the chase i mean that's really a matter of taste but uh, definitely that green spectra flame paint is very very awesome to me it's a color i love and it's the reason why i had picked up the huracan from the first uh, series of uh, the exotic envy just the color um so yeah two chase pieces um so that's a th that's a number two and number three since they started doing these chase pieces so kind of surprised very happy uh yeah again great trade bait so um and i'll finish off this video uh just with a quick showcase um, you know, I don't have anything that, um, I want to crack right now, but I thought that it'd be cool to look at, uh, a couple of, uh, larger scale cars, just a quick showcase of, uh, um, a line that, of, of diecast cars that I really used to enjoy a lot, uh, and that I had quite a few of, and I still have a couple of basically, uh, we're talking about the Maisto assembly line series, um, these are 124th scale cars. Uh, well, some of the larger ones are 125th, but either way, that that size of car. And um, yeah, I picked. Uh, I uh, I just wanted to uh, show you my two favorite that I still have in my collection. Basically, you know, check them out, see about the features and pros and cons and whatnot. Mind you, when I bought these, they were probably around 17, 18 dollars Canadian, approximately. So, you know, pretty cheap, you know, cheaper than the, uh, uh, example, the Motormax 124s that, uh, you would find at Walmart and whatnot, uh, at the current time. Um, so first one I'm going to show is, uh, this one here. So it's a, uh, Maserati 4200, uh, GT Trofeo. So, uh, one make, um, one make, uh, series race car, um, and basically, the way these come in the box, uh, you have the chassis, the body, uh, which is die cast, obviously, um, and the chassis, the interior parts, the body, the wheels, all in different components. And it comes with a little screwdriver, and you can screw everything together, basically. Um, so this is the first one I'm going to show. Um, it's a body style I really like. Um, we did get the 4200 GT, but we didn't get the 3200 GT with the smaller uh, twin turbo V8 of this model that uh, was offered in Europe with the little boomerang rear lights, uh, which look really cool, if odd. So yeah, since this is a Trofeo, you'd have that big, big wing. You have a uh, much more pronounced front splitter uh, that uh, inspired the Grand Sport version of, uh, of this car, like the last of the line before uh, going towards the Gran Turismo. Um, some small details lacking there. I mean, the front lights are lensed, and you've got the color coded uh, bezel in the back. Um, you do have details for the uh, um, the turn signals. Uh, you can see that there's some Pirelli branding on the mirrors on the front wing. Got the Maserati logo there. Unfortunately, the side markers are not painted, but at the same time, it's quite possible since this is a race car, they would just have removed them for weight savings and just put a little plastic cap instead. Quite possible. Uh, this one, unfortunately, does have a little crack in the windshield, as you can see. But nevertheless, it's in fairly good condition. Uh, we're talking about uh, opening doors, uh, single seat interior, as you can see, with full roll cage. Um, nicely detailed throughout. Obviously, the 124th scale does give access to a little bit more uh, detail. Now, mind you, I've uh, pulled this off a shelf. It's a little bit uh, dusty. Dusty and crusty. Uh, it's kind of hard to go through the whole interior there, but uh, all in all, you know, you've got some nice uh, details in regards to the center console, as you can see. This seems to be a... Uh, uh, Cambio Corsa car, so with the uh, somewhat uh, somewhat cool uh, dual clutch or single clutch or sequential gearbox, or it's not really sequential. It's more like a clutchless uh, clutchless manual with the well, the famous flappy paddle gearbox to uh, use uh, Jeremy Clarkson's uh, expression. There, this is literally you know at the same time as the F1 box was offered on the Ferrari. Uh, 
360 and three, um, yeah, yeah, 360 pretty much the Modena. Uh, not the greatest, uh, not the greatest gearbox, and it has not aged super well, but still, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so Maserati logos, as you can see on the front, you've got some hood pins, the Pirelli branding again, those two go fast, uh, go faster stripes. And um, yeah, the hood does open as well. It doesn't stay open, unfortunately. These are not super high quality, right? But, uh, you know, decent engine with the uh, those uh, infamous heads, basically. They look really, really good. I mean, you know, it's a good looking engine. Uh, and this is actually another piece that you put uh, that you put together there. All the metal stuff, including the hood that opens and the doors, they're all assembled already when you buy these. Um, I honestly don't know what these would be worth, but uh, you know, either way, uh, you know, you got the uh, steerable wheels. Um, they don't work with the steering wheel per se. You can still pose them to a certain extent, and the wheels are actually Grand Sport wheels. Uh, they're very well reproduced, so. I like this car. It's definitely a nice looking, uh, nice looking vehicle, and uh, you know that. Uh, yeah, really nice car. Uh, second one, last car we're gonna show. We just close off with uh, kind of a bang there. Um, we're gonna close off the showcase with uh, another Maisto assembly line model. You know, this is a 124 scale. This one is the. Uh, here, let's put this one a little bit more in the background here, and uh, we'll check out this one, which is one of my favorite cars from the 90s, the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR. So, this is a 125th scale as opposed to the 124th scale. You can kind of see that the Maserati looks a little bit bigger than it should in comparison, but uh, these, these cars are very, very wide, and I mean, if they went 124th, they would have... To design new packaging and uh, compared to the other models that are offered in this series, which vary from uh, American Muscle all the way to, uh, you know, other uh, other European uh, vehicles. And i um, not sure if they do anything Japanese in that series, but either way, I digress. Check out the details on this one. I find this one is a little bit better quality and it is an older release. Um, a lot of features per se you know you've got the posable wheels again these are then the at, at the period where this one came out i'm not sure if there's a copyright under this fortunately not it's actually 126 scale from what i can see but um yeah so uh they actually used to come with two sets of wheels i actually have um, another one that i'll probably pull out another time uh for another showcase there but uh yeah, they used to put uh, two sets of wheels in different colors, basically same wheel design, the stock wheel design. Um, so I obviously opted to put the silvers uh, on this one as it was more representative of what the car should look like. Uh, but it did also come with the same set of wheels, but in gold chrome, which is pretty cool. Those wheels are aside somewhere and I'm keeping them for, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, some other alternate use on another model, maybe. Um only one set of tires though, because these tires you can remove. They are treaded, uh, they're rubber. You've got the uh, mirrors that are uh, the wing mirrors, which are pretty cool. Also, this one does have uh, opening doors, which are kind of hard to get open, but once you do, they do open and they actually stay open. Give you a little glimpse of the interior, but I mean, there's it's nothing too. Uh, too flattering or anything like that you'll probably see a little bit that the seats do have the harnesses and that plaid uh, plaid looking seat material we can get a better view from this side yeah there you go yeah so those are just stickers basically that you just apply to the seats so it's nothing crazy again the uh side, the turn signals on the side are not painted in which is kind of a shame you do have the little Mercedes badge here that is extremely prone to braking, but it is there, just like the real car. And, you know, you've got the AMG sticker that you put on the front plate, which is showing definite signs of age as this has been displayed for the better part of a decade. Lens front lights and lens rears, obviously. Uh, no, opening, uh, no opening clamshell on the back. That would have been awesome, but pretty sure it would have been also at another price point other than that the details are pretty good you know slightly 
you know, as you can see on the bottom part here, it's slightly uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit of casting, uh, casting issue there. It's a little bit sloppy, but you know, overall not bad. Uh, base being black plastic is great because it gives a great look to the diffuser versus the uh, metal body and classic Mercedes Brilliant Silver. And you got that big air scoop for the engine that's uh, mounted uh, mid rear. So there you go. So that pretty much concludes what I wanted to show you today. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, looking at these two uh, these two models here, two little race cars. Um, you know, if you liked uh, what you saw, uh, feel free to leave a like. Of course, uh, comment your feedback and uh, subscribe to be advised of when uh, I upload next. On that, I'll uh, bid you farewell, happy hunting, and uh, stay safe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.